and then letting them take you, this is not going to end. And sending 60 ships instead of six will just mm-hmm. mean that they'll mm-hmm. have more gunboats out there to slap this, mm-hmm. and it'll take them longer to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, a few may trickle through, but I don't see the Israelis letting, letting their blockade be broken as long as they have a reasonable certainty that the United States will not weigh in against them, and since they own the Congress and the media, that's more than a certainty. And as long as they're not going to be resisted. What made the initial strike on the six boats so difficult for them internationally was that they were resisted. Mm -hmm. And that blew up in everyone's face. Whereas when the crew of the Rachel Corey just said, we give up, it made no waves at all. Mm -hmm. It was not noticed. Here is, uh, uh, by the way... When the convoy went into Gaza, you remember the land convoy Mm -hmm. that uh, went through wandering through southern Europe and came around and (laughs) we weren't let in. Mm -hmm. What ended with it was a few people and some supplies got through, but the predominant picture that was presented to the world was a handful of of the activists sitting on the ground in front of a couple of tents, before a line of of smirking Egyptian policemen. Mm -hmm. That doesn't convey support or success. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you know, peaceful resistance and nonviolent resistance are useful against civilized opponents. Right. But when you have ruthless opponents, you know, the Israelis are civilized in their own right. So is Genghis Khan. (laughs) Um, but, well, that may not be fair to Genghis Khan, I'm not sure. Um, that but one's when gonna, you're, that when one's, you're, de- when that you're one's dealing gonna... with people as ruthless mm-hmm. as the, as the extreme right of the Israeli spectrum, which I think Haharetz had an article a couple of days ago, said now probably counts 90% of the Israeli population mm-hmm. in different lines. Mm-hmm. You know, they aren't going to, to them... Activists, whether by land or sea, who are committed to surrender rather than resistance, mm-hmm. just make easier victims. Mm-hmm. Well, they you... just make easier victims. That's all they do. And some of the supplies may get to Gaza, but the point, the point of the of the convoys, whether land or sea, the point of the convoys is not, as so many of the, the, the spokesmen and women for it have said, to show solidarity with the people of Gaza. The point is to break the blockade. Mm-hmm. Protestations of solidarity do nothing. Mm-hmm. There will be no mass uprisings in the villages of, of Egypt and Jordan, as someone said when the land convoy was, mm-hmm. was put aside. Mm-hmm. And proceeding in a bullheaded fashion to keep going ahead when you know what the Israelis are like and what they are prepared to do to you and that the United States will do nothing to restrain them is essentially showing the same type of strategic brilliance that Hitler showed at Stalingrad. Right, right. You know, we will not surrender. Mm-hmm. We never retreat. Mm-hmm. We will keep fighting and going forward. Guys, you can't do that and win. Mm-hmm. You know, the road, the road to justice for Palestine and the road to constraining Israel both run through Washington, Washington. D.C. Right, exactly. They do not run through Anatolia. Mm-hmm. They do not run through Egypt. They do not run through the Mediterranean. They run through the United States and into Washington, D.C. And I don't mean the congressional hearing rooms. Those mm-hmm. are taken. They're captured. They're mm-hmm. enemy territory. Mm-hmm. I mean the people in America. Mm-hmm. You know, if if I were if I were in a position to to organize convoys, and I am not, I am not, and so I, I realize this is one of those. Well, talk is cheap. Well, it may be, but I'm not in a position to organize convoys, and people who are may listen. Instead of running co- running convoys across the underbelly of Europe and coming up to eat to Israel, and knowing they're going to stop you again. They're going to stop you again and have street theater on the on either the Israeli border crossings. 
Some may trickle into Egypt if they can get through Israel, if the Israelis let them through. But it will be an elephant grunting and giving birth to a mouse. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing that, I'd take a couple of convoys, start one up around San Francisco, mm -hmm. the other one around San Diego, mm -hmm. go on the major interstates heading toward Washington, D.C., and at every major and most small towns, I'd stop and give a presentation on what it is. Mm-hmm because the American people don't know and the local media are not captured. Mm -hmm. The local media in America are not captured. The national media are captured, but there's a lot of local stations, there's a lot of local newspapers that have their own agendas and it's not the one that's set in New York and Washington. You've got to get the message to the American people by going around the mainstream media and around the Congress in a place where the Israelis can't get to you. Mm -hmm and get that message to the American people. And once that starts to get around, and I, I found this on, on the cases of some people that I have spoken with, um, you know, small groups, individuals that, are, that I know within the United States that I'm in a private capacity, you know, not in a military capacity, just in a private capacity, and they don't know of this. And once they start hearing about it, they too start sending to their distribution list Mm -hmm. Things that I ship from Debbie Menon's My Catbird Seat and mm -hmm. from Veterans Today and from Intifada Palestine. They've never seen it before, but once they've seen it, they start circulating it too. Mm -hmm. That's the road to success, if there is one. If there is if one. If there exactly. is one. Right. That's the but problem. But it isn't is that, anywhere else. Yeah, that's, that's the problem is that we're dealing with uh, somebody who, if you were to look up the word intransigence in the dictionary, it would have a picture of Israel. This is the problem is that they – you, you know, they don't budge. I mean, and, and, you know, it just hit me as you were describing this, Alan. Uh, what what reason does the ruling par party in Israel have to budge on it? I mean, this latest thing that happened with uh, these commandos storming these ships and killing these people, it's made Netanyahu even more wildly popular. I mean, people yep. were honking their horns and cheering and everything else. Every time he does one of these things his poll numbers are going to go up, so why the hell wouldn't he do it? Sure, you know, and it's, and it's the same thing, again, and, and, and the, the Israelis aren't Nazis. They really aren't. And call talk about a Zion-Nazi really isn't fair in that case on it. Um, they're better than the Nazis. They're worse than, South, worse than South African apartheid, so they're somewhere in that middle ground. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, very seriously. I mean, I, know, I, I, know. I, I, was in South, I was in South Africa during apartheid when I was still at the Army War College. I went there on vacation in a private capacity mm -hmm. um, and had some, had some interesting discussions with people. But no, the Israelis are much worse than apartheid South Africa. It's not fair to compare the old South African system to theirs. Mm -hmm. um, the South African apartheid, the majority of the police and army were, were non-white senior black officer I met during apartheid, this was in 87 in South Africa, was a brigadier, you know, uh -huh. they, they, they had, they had there, there were no assaults on Soweto like there were on Gaza City, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, I mean, it just never happened, it wouldn't uh -huh. have even occurred to them to do it, uh -huh. so they're better, the Israelis are worse than the South Africans, better than the Nazis, but the same principle applied, that whenever you have a government that is generally of a, of a country that is generally despised by most other countries mm -hmm. the path to popularity is strength mm -hmm. you know it's the strength through joy or joy through strength if you wish mm -hmm. you know you know after world war ii you know so many germans talked about how they had really opposed hitler you know mm -hmm. and maybe that was true but you know when i look at, at the pictures from germany when when he retook the rhineland and then absorbed Australia, Austria, and then went into Czechoslovakia into the sedate land. There were mass numbers of people cheering him. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the road to popularity. When they didn't cheer him was when the war started in Poland. At that point, World War One was too close. Mm -hmm. But no, I mean Netanyahu and Lieberman have no reason to change. They're not being hurt. They're not being deprived of a cent or a bullet from the United States. Mm -hmm. They get they get constant protests protestations from the United States about how right they were, how justified they were, how popular they were. My understanding is that the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee is in, either has introduced or is going to be introducing in the next couple of days. He's putting together co-signers 
you know, praising Israel for their courage and self-restraint. Uh-huh. <laughs> Phil Turney. You know, Orwell, Orwell's 84 didn't even scratch the surface. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? But that's, that's why, to get around this, you know, you can't appeal to the government in Washington. You can't appeal to the mainstream media. And you can't keep throwing away resources and people, not that you're throwing them away down a pit, but mm-hmm. just losing them and wasting them mm-hmm. by playing to the Israeli strength. The sure. Israeli strength are on the ground in the eastern Mediterranean where they have direct military superiority on the ground, an extremely powerful air force, a lot of nukes, and an umbrella for 